Some of our friends will say that nothing changes, nothing will change. I, I don't subscribe to that. So people um, often say that we don't have the political climate to achieve the kind of long-term care policy solutions we need. And then some people also say that long-term care is a bipartisan issue. Some people use the term transpartisan because it affects so many people, right? right? Is it a bipartisan issue and why or why not? Is absolutely a transpartisan issue. Say more. And I'll give you an example. So the Weinberg Foundation ran a ran a three year, fourteen site, nine state family and informal caregiver initiative. And in each one of those fourteen sites, we required that the highest local elected official actually become knowledgeable with the project in order to get the money. So I met a bunch of mayors and Congress people as part of this project. In half of those, half of those, and I mentioned this before, that person took me aside and wanted to tell me a story about what was happening to her, his mm -hmm. mom or dad. It happens to me all and, the time. Right. I'm sure it happens to you all the time because we all are faced with that. You know, 40 million current caregivers. Who are those 40 million people? They're Democrats, they're Republicans, they're I don't cares, they're, mm -hmm. you know, they're Catholics and Muslims, they're everybody. Right. The solutions are policy solutions, but they're also community solutions. It's how do we organize communities to support people who are providing care and the care recipient, but it's also making policy decisions that takes long-term care out of the realm of something that's kind of given as charity, like how we think of Medicaid, that has to be highly regulated to become, to become a social right, which is the essence of social insurance. The idea that we could get to a living wage with benefits for this workforce in this country right. without an infusion of public resources and a real investment right. in this workforce beyond Medicaid and what right. exists through Medicaid is seems impossible. There's, I mean, families don't have more money right. and Medicaid certainly is being starved as a system. Right. So that's why we have started to look at social insurance. Right. Can you explain to people what social insurance is. Where people are able to join together their dollars in order to cover those intransigencies, those things that happen in life that we need to have covered by somebody, right? So what's the origin of social security or all social insurance is a recognition that many of us, hopefully almost all of us, get old, that we get to a place where we may not be part of the workforce and that we need to have something to live on, mm -hmm. right? So absent an effective private pension system, which we don't have in this country, the only way we can really do that is by bringing together people's dollars in order to pay people at least some sort of floor. The floor isn't high enough, but pay some kind of floor for people to live on. It's an incredibly simple concept, mm -hmm. which all societies engage in, and societies ought to engage in various sorts of ways. Social Security has been an enormously successful or popular program because what we've done is essentially we've, we've guaranteed that people have some minimum standard of living mm -hmm. when they reach a particular mm -hmm. age. Mm -hmm. There is no reason why we can't do that for the things that we're talking about. If we're talking about an increasing number of people needing long-term care, then we have to have a way to cover that long-term care. Mm -hmm. and probably the best way to do that is take advantage of the assets that people have and pool them together. Mm -hmm. I would say that this issue so far is a subpartisan issue because <laughs> neither party <laughs> has really taken it on in a meaningful way. Right. Um, and so there is an opportunity for us to make it a transpartisan <laughs> issue trans for partisan. sure. Um, but there, yeah. This is part of the reason why I think it could be a successful issue at the state level mm -hmm. as opposed to the national level. Same right? way. Because 
state legislatures and even, even county and municipal legislatures really have the capacity to be, uh, they're locally determined. I mean, it's the old Tip O'Neill thing, all politics is local, right? right? So the Maryland legislature, and that's the one I'm most familiar with these days, I used yeah. to know the Illinois legislature well, Massachusetts, Maryland legislature meets for like four months a year, right? You know all these guys. They have regular jobs every day, right? So there are, you can appeal to people in ways that you can't necessarily appeal to them when you're in Congress, when they're in Washington all those weeks a year.